We were going from house to house collecting all the bodies. We were going at groups. Every group has at least five or six members. And I was in charge of one group. Today my job is uh, I'm in charge of the whole of Tefaza, as I told you before, to collect all the tissue samples and the blood and all the what, whatever is left to bring all the evidence from the houses. Basically, when we were collecting the, the bodies from house to house, we were walking from place to place. We didn't know what we were gonna get, we were gonna see every time we walked into a house. I'm uh, Baruch Hashem married. I have two married kids and I have two grandchildren. And this story is one of the personal stories that I take with me every time I walk into the houses over here and in Barry. I walked into one of the houses. Uh, we walked, we were walking in from house to house into the houses. And then we walked into the house. And when I walked into the house, there was a birthday cake sitting on the table. When you see a birthday cake, the first impression that you get is a party. It was Simchas Torah. Shabbos, the first impression that you get is right away the feeling of joy. The joy that was happening over there, everyone was happy and everyone was feeling very down with the family itself. They were sitting there enjoying the time. And right away when you see a cake and you walk into someone's house, you right away look around to see if you can see pictures. So right away we saw our pictures sitting on the fridge. The family of five members with two kids, two parents, and a grandmother that used to live with them. When we walked into that house, the first thing that we saw that was the cake, and then I saw the, the, the pictures, and I didn't come to eat cake, so right away I looked to see, okay, where, what's, what's going on over here? And the bad smell of burned bodies was coming from the back room, from the safe room. Well, I call this... The story that I, what I call this story the circle of life because when I walked into the room, I saw a bon, a, 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 like something like a bonfire, like something like standing over there. And I said to myself, what, what is this? And when I walked in closer to see what it is, I saw two little kids holding their parents' legs around the legs. They were wrapped, their arms were wrapped around the legs. Whatever was left because they were burned to the bones. And the parents, the, two, the three parents, the two parents and the grandmother were leaning over to cover those children. As we saw before, the house was burned down. That was the situation over there also. The, the house itself was, the living room was okay, but the safe room was burned totally into ashes. The bones were left and they were like wrapped one into each other. As they had the, the uh, like they made like a circle of life, the last minutes of living their life together they were holding each other, hugging each other, and they were standing there. It's hard to understand how, how th those last minutes are all the time running through your head and thinking to yourself, what, what, what happened in those minutes? What happened in those seconds? Trying to, 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 to hug the kids, to hug the parents. To, everyone's trying to live the last moments. And that's how they died. We as Zaka members, we had to lay them down, each body, take them apart from those, wrap it in, into each other, lay them down, and walk out with each body inside a bag, walking through the living room, passing the birthday cake, and seeing the pictures. Each one, so you say, you say to yourself, okay, this is the father, this is the mother, and these are the children, and this is the grandmother. Every time walking by those pictures, it was something that you can't understand. You can't understand how 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 much vicious to be in the, in the situation over here. This is one little story 
but one big story that puts you in position to understand what, what happened in these houses. I don't know. Friday after a full week of not sleeping, maybe five hours in the whole week. It was already Thursday evening, around 9 o'clock. And I told the guys, okay, I'll take you off for Shabbos. And I left around 9 o'clock. I got home around 11. I told my wife, she's a nurse. I told her, you take the night shift so I can sleep. One night, please. Let me get some strength. We come for Shabbos a little bit clear-minded. I had 45 guests. Shabbos, my children, my grandchildren, my, my mother-in-law, my brother-in-law is from Ashkelon, and all around, they came from Shabbos. <coughs> Next morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, I, I, I see my wife walking into the house after her night shift. I told her, okay, it's time for you to go to sleep. I'll come for Shabbos. I'm going to sleep until 12 o'clock. Well, maybe an hour, hour and a half later, I get a phone call from Chaim. Chaim tells me, get on the truck, go back to Barry. I told him, we made up that I'm not working Friday. So he says to me, there's a special mission. You have to come, you have to leave now, this second. Okay, I get up on the truck. I take my, my guys with me together and we head towards Barry. On the whole way, we we're like trying to understand what's going on. So he tells us there's over 30 bodies that are tied and in different ways. Well, basically, what we, what I got, the, the, the mission was we had thirty bodies between the border of Beeri and the gate, the main wall. Uh, we came to Be'eri, it was already around 10.30, something like that, and there was shooting and bombing. Whatever you hear here is nothing what we heard there. And I was told from the army that you can't get even close to the gate itself. So I said to myself, as a from Jew, you, you have a Muna, and you know that you didn't come stand until Be'eri, from Modin Elite, until Be'eri, it takes me every time two hours at least to come. I said to myself, okay, it has to be there's a certain mission that Kosh Baruch Hu gave me to, to, to be here. So I walked over to one of the person, the people that was in charge and told me, listen, there's two houses that you can take care of them now. There's one burned house and there's another house. The burned house is called Gimel Dalet. That's where they put the children when they, the parents go to work. So they leave the kids early in the morning. So they left the kids over there and that house burned down. But we couldn't get into it until we didn't get the okay to go in. The SAP didn't give us the permission. So we were waiting for that. And then a different house was a 45, 46, and a house collapsed. So we decided, okay, we'll check those two houses to make sure that we know what's going on over there. So we walk into one of the houses over there. We walk down the hallway. And opposite the hallway at the end, I see that the ceiling, the roofs over there were those, uh, they had like a, a very, very thin cement ceiling so it collapsed when when the house burned down so the the cement collapsed at the end of the, that room i saw there's like a small bump a lump from the from the cement i told the guys listen let's pick up the cement let's check to see if there's something under we pick up the cement and we find we found over there a five-year-old child and according to the way that the 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 drawer is so we can see how how old the child is that child was around five, five, between five and six years old. So that was already a, a, a one nechama for myself to say, okay, I didn't come for two hours for nothing. So I knew, okay, that's the first thing. Then we walk into the second room, and that room was even much, much worse, because when we picked up the cement, and what we saw was a child around three or four years old, he had a knife stuck from side to side of his, in his head. And there was another element. There was a hammer. The, the piece of the hammer was burned totally, but it was stuck with a piece of skull. So that child, not only they stabbed him with the knife, they stabbed him also with the, with the hammer. This is what we saw over here in these areas. 
There are houses over here on this kibbutz itself that we saw a house that you, you walked in the house, the house looked like nothing happened. But when you came into the bedrooms, we saw hammers and knives and, and different elements that they used just to kill the people that were laying in their beds. Uh, the other house, the 55, 55 56, we, we found over there two bodies. We got the call saying that the, there's a bad smell over there. And we started moving all the stones and all the stuff, whatever, all the rebel over there. And we moved, we picked up one of the, a mattress. And under that mattress, we found two bodies. Uh, later on, I understood that the, under that whole pile were over 30 bodies when they started bringing in tractors to clean up all the, all the whatever fell over there. And all those bodies were naked. In that house. And it's terrible, terrible stories that we saw and we dealt with. And everything is the Shem Shammai. We're all volunteers of Zaka. And we do our best to bring the, the mason to Kvura and to make sure that nothing is left behind. There's an union of, 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 of kibud, uh, a mason. That's, a, that's the main goal. And but not only that, there's also kibud achaim. We make sure that no one has to see what we saw. And we make sure that all the evidence and all the blood and all the tissue samples and all, that, all the bones are not left around. And that's our part of Chesed that we are, we're working over here. And as Hashem, we should know, we should never know any more Tsar. See only Bias Mashiach. Thank you very much. And we're here, Zaka members. We're here from the first day, and we're going to be staying here until the last day to make sure that nothing's left behind. Thank you. Thank you.